What's poppin', what's poppin', what's poppin'? Welcome to Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. Sup, Moose? What up, y'all? Listen, and today we are going to go over the man who had created, well, part, not super created, but definitely the sound of a whole movement in our childhood days, right? Um, you you may know him as a uh, Swiss Beach. You may know him as Zone Zone. You may know him as one of the best producers out before, now, in the future, right? Clearly, I already said his name, Swiss Beats. Hey, hey, Moose, how you feeling about Swiss Beats? Man, this is the, honestly this so many lessons. Like, you know, you think you know somebody, but then you like start really digging deep and you're like, whoa, whoa. We talked about it. It's like, uh, we have too many good clips, <laughs> right? Like that, that's not, yeah, that's a rare problem. So no, this, this has been incredible, man. I'm really excited to, to dive deeper and just kind of break down the mindset, the mentality and, and how he's arrived to where he is now. We're not going to hold up. Go into the intro. Two kids from Queens. Cut from a different cloth. Now, joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. So, um, man, I'm so excited about this this episode. I don't think you understand. So this was honestly like a last minute vibe, right? Uh, we had another situation. We had another plan for this episode. Um, but I really feel like we make the best decisions very last minute. Well, me making the last decision and uh, Moose being like, yo, that's really dope. Actually, let me add this, this, that, and a third. Like together, we make the dopest like last minute decisions. I just want to put that out yeah. there. But yo, before before we get super into it, let me go through the review of the week. Shout out to everybody who sends us a review, who submits that, all that great stuff. Who's been sharing it is a whole vibe, and we wouldn't be here without y'all. So this one says from the Canna Pride Girls. I hope I said that right. Y'all know I always mess up these names, right? But who needs TV anymore? This podcast is entertaining, educational, and raw. The topics are broken down in a way that's so helpful for people to understand. So inspiring. <laughs> shout out to you for the review. And shout out to everybody who sends us a review. I, yo, Moose, have you seen these reviews? These reviews like almost got me teared up. Like... Yeah, like, I, oh I was God. shocked to see the amount of uh, five star reviews. I'm like, wow, there is a lot of people who are really taking time to leave those reviews. So definitely super grateful and much appreciated for sure. Facts. But I don't I, I just want to dive right into it, but I'm not because I want I want to give some backstory. Right. Um, man, Rough Riders was like, of course, we first heard about Swiss Beats through the whole Rough Riders movement. Uh, mm -hmm. And. Uh, me and Moose, before we even press record, like we were playing some of Swiss uh, Swiss beats, literally beats. Um, and even the impact that he did with Rough Riders and DMX, I was like, yo, you haven't heard like the intro for, for DMX? What are, what are you talking about? That was like a whole movement in New York. You heard that first intro and it stopped everything. But he created such a sound that is still unmatched. It's it doesn't make any kind of sense. But the the Rough Riders tapes, because they were tapes mm -hmm. back then, right? Yeah. Rough Riders tapes when he brought uh Dragon and Eve and everybody all together in one compilation, like even had Snoop on it and everything. Like that sound from going from New York to the South to the West and everything like that. I, and then the, the motorcycles and everything, like what, what do you remember from the Rough Rider days? Like not the yeah. Swiss we know now who we will get into oh. is super sophisticated and everything like that. But 
<laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I, I definitely remember like the Rough Riders specifically through the motorcycles. Uh, you know, literally on my block where I grew up in Queens, uh, one of my best friend's older brother was huge into the motorcycle scene. So mm -hmm. he used to ride with them. That's crazy. Uh, so that's kind of how I got introduced to it. Yeah, he used to bring back the DVDs with them like doing stunts on the highways and like riding all over the city. Uh, and we were like just little kids sitting there watching. And I'm sure Swiss Beats' music was on there at the time, but I probably, you know, didn't connect two and two together. So to see the, the progression, like you said, from then, which was probably 98, 99 yeah. from what I remember, you know, almost... 25, 30 years later, it's like, wow, man, that's incredible. Right. And the the whole, you know, clearly the one that, that got him super on the scenes was the Rough Riders anthem. Like, yeah. Yeah. Every, and to, it, the, it, I can't even talk. Like, just that whole movement. Like, we can't, we can't knock how big Rough Riders anthem was. And even some people who could still play it to this day is still like, Still, there's still a big movement with it. And, and and to see how he went from there being starting at like, what, 19 or something like that, right? Younger. To, to Younger, now yeah. creating now a, a whole new internet movement, right, which we'll get into. Um, it, it It's so crazy because he started as a DJ, right? He started as a DJ and has become not only... Uh, a producer, but an entrepreneur, uh, an art collector, a father, a great husband. Like, I, what's what's the? Hold on, let's let's start it off. What's 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 the net worth? Do I even want to ask? What are we what are we looking like? What are we looking hey, like? Hey, I'll tell you what. Yeah, it's it's nice because for someone who you wouldn't think because of just how he kind of like gets off the main scene a little bit and gets interested in something else and then pops back up. All of these moves have been steadily increasing his net worth. He comes in with a $150 million net worth. Oof. Yeah. I mean, I, as we break it down, you, you will see why. Um, and like, one of the things that, that really, as we were doing the research, um, that really stood out is he definitely didn't stay in the creative mode. Like he took on the word producer to whole new levels. Like it wasn't just a producer in music, but he was a producer in culture. And I think that's, that's huge for people to understand when it comes to this episode is that we're given certain titles within the, in the industry but it's up to us to really expand that to not just the industry, but the culture. Um, and it's how he just created one movement to the next movement, to another sound, to now uh, art culture, to how he made it cool to go back to college. Like so many different gems that you're going to get out of this and I want to bring it back to why do we kind of do these different episodes? We really want to give the flowers to our living legends and break it down to a part where we can understand the brand and business side. You know, there's there's other shows that are going to give you kind of the biography of things and tell their career from that kind of standpoint. Right. But we really want to help people not only grow their their brands, because that's just where you need to have a brand nowadays, but really start to make different waves as creating a business and an empire, right? And all these people, we can learn something from them, especially when we break it down into the flight assessment. Yay! You like that little transition? I like, like that. that. Yeah. I like that. I was about to say, that's a nice little like segue. Like I saw that. what you did there. I like that. I, I didn't like practice that. that. I didn't practice that. That was um, good. <laughs> that was but, good. I'm not going to hold it. But um, if you haven't taken the flight assessment yet, you need to. We really try to break it down so it is the pilot, the flight attendant, the ground crew, air traffic control. These are different characters from the assessment to help you connect 
and identify not only yourself, but how can you connect with these living legends? And Moose, if you can, in a minute and 30 or 45 or however you feel like it, because we didn't do it last episode, can you explain what is what? Absolutely. Yeah. So this is basically based off of the dominant personality types that exist in the world. And as Nikki mentioned, we're drawing, we're drawing connection between each one. And it's like, what was the driver behind each of these characters or each of these people's success, right? Which one of these personality styles you think helped contribute to their success? So we use the airport theme because it's easy to observe. So when you look at the pilot, you notice the pilot is swagged out, gets on the plane, goes straight to the cockpit. And he's really focused on getting the plane from where it is to its final destination. So they're not really interacting with people like that until they get the job done and land the plane safely. So when we think of pilot characters or people who have that pilot personality, we talk about A-type personalities, right? People who are super driven and determined and they love to uh, really go after new challenges. And then up next, another style you're going to notice is, of course, the flight attendant. So when you're getting on the plane and you pass the cockpit and you're going to your seat, you're probably going to come across a flight attendant that's smiling, welcoming you to the plane. Uh, during your trip, they're going to want to make sure you have a phenomenal experience. So those of that style are typically those who are super charismatic, right? They have a lot of charisma, a lot of charm. They love to be around people. They have an infectious smile. And again, for them, it's all about utilizing relationships to build and grow the experience. And then if you're in your seat, you're sitting by the window, you look out the window seat, you're going to see some people in orange, blue, or green vest doing a, a lot of different things, like a, a very important piece to the puzzle because they're putting bags onto the plane. They're maybe helping the pilot get through uh, from the gate onto the runway or vice versa or bringing up snacks and beverages to the flight attendants to serve during the trip. So these are people who are behind the scenes in a sense, but they play a major part to what happens and what you see up front on stage, right? So yeah, you can call them maybe supportive, uh, very loyal to a vision, very flexible and adaptable. They can play in a lot of different areas because they're also multi-talented. And then lastly, you're going to have the air traffic control. Again, not people that you hear or see much from, but they're up in the tower somewhere, somewhere having a different view of what's happening on the ground. But they're looking at charts, numbers, schedules, making sure no two planes are coming off, uh, leaving from the same runway, right? Just really working with the small details to make sure everything clicks. And that's it. There you have it. All four. So we're going to try to figure out what Swiss Beats uh, is or identifies with. So we'll get right into that. So we went a little bit into the music career and everything. I mean, my man has made so many platinum hits, platinum albums, been uh, between Eve, between DMX, countless of plaques for DMX um, and all the compilations and working with so many other, Little Wayne, right, Kanye, so many. Um, what does he do and what does he feel about these different accolades, these different awards uh, that he gets? I found it very interesting. So our first clip is kind of his thought process with that. This would be the first plaque I hung on my wall since I was like 18. Wow. I gave wow. away everything else, Grammys, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because really? Because it's hmm. like people get complacent with where they at with hanging all these things around, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I don't want to see that. I want I want to feel empty. I want to feel mm. like I haven't done anything. I don't want to see all these things around me like as if I made it when I'm still hungry and I still have a lot to do and I still have a lot more to learn. I'm still a student. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Moose, start it off. Yeah, I love I love the passion and the drive, man. And and you know, for me, we and I think everyone really in our circle really prides themselves on being lifelong learners because it's it's our way of staying dedicated to the craft, to the mission, to the calling, and looking for ways to continue to improve. So I like what he says. I want to continue to be a student. But another way you can look at this is what you what you did before no longer qualifies you, right? And and that's kind of like. That, that, that's where he's telling you, like, yo, don't put the plaques on the wall because that's going to make me sit back and say, oh, look at all I've accomplished or look at what I've done. But when you walk with the mentality of I'm only good as what I did yesterday or what I'm doing today, 
I think that definitely gives you a new level of focus and drive where you no longer rest on your laurels. Like one of my favorite things that I've learned about the 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 last dance when we were, you know, in COVID or in the beginning of COVID, everyone watching the last dance, it was MJ making up scenarios in his head about people, right, almost like dissing them or talking smack because he just, it got too easy. So yeah. he had to find ways to bring this, this savage out, which I love. So I, honestly, I'm definitely of the belief that, especially on your way to the top or as others begin to recognize your accomplishments, you have to keep yourself grounded so that you can continue to reach your potential but more importantly, it helps you stay grounded in who you are and protect your humility because you don't want a lot of that to get to your head either. Like, oh, word, you know what? I, like, I looked up this stat. Yo, 350 million records sold worldwide. <laughs> crazy, mm. crazy. He's contributed to so much, right? Like we said, DMX, the Rough Riders anthem, again, so many, so many hits. Six Grammy nominations, got a, got a Grammy for on to the next one, right? Like he's done a lot. So I think that mentality of saying, get those things out of here, right? So right. that I can stay focused and humble. I thought that was powerful. And so the, the crazy thing is like, how do you not, some people decorate their whole house with the plaques, yeah. whole house with the Grammys and everything like that. And he's like, nah, I'm, this is the first one since I started, right? Um, and where some people may need that affirmation, may need that pat on the back, he's like, if I get that, that could lose some of my drive. That could lose some, because I'm going to look at it and be like, yo, I made it, right? Um, and I'm looking at that, like, oh, I'm about to take down a whole bunch of stuff. No, I don't have nothing. <laughs> I don't have nothing pulled up. But what I was thinking was it, it, the, the good thing he said is like, yo, it was like man made like awards. Like he didn't care what somebody made up because that doesn't define him. And I think we look at these awards, these different accolades, these different, you know, uh, statuses and put so much weight towards it. But they were really man made. They don't necessarily define who you are and your value or what you really have accomplished, because who are they to say that you truly accomplished what you were there for? You know, I think those were great milestones. They were great things to say, yo, I got it off the list, but I'm not done. Right now, some people are going to think of it like, well, we need to celebrate. We need to, you know, uh, show love to those who are doing great. And this is true, right? This is absolutely true. I'm, I'm so for the awards and all those great stuff, because you gotta, you gotta make a person feel as if they're not only doing wrong, Right. Yeah. We're very quick to be like, you did this wrong. You did that. So let me celebrate the great things that you do do. Right. But he's like, I, I don't even need that. I, I truly don't. It's not my it's not my thing. And I, I see that and I'm like, yo, that would explain why so many years later you're still coming up with new things as if you were just starting. Like that was his way of making sure that his creativity doesn't get tainted, that his creativity doesn't stop or hit a ceiling because he thinks that I, I came into the music business as this and I accomplished that, or I came into uh, entrepreneurship as this and I've done that, right? And I think everybody has to figure out that thing and it may not be taking all the awards and degrees and all that stuff down, right? But what is it, that thing that's going to keep you humble? What is that, you know, what do you have to remove from your environment, from your room, from your workplace that will always keep you hungry, that will always keep that drive? Like, 
I don't care if it's a picture of somebody who is struggling or where, like, I love how, um, how some people, when they're on their weight loss journey, they'll put a screensaver of what they used to be, right? Mm. And be like, yo, I'm not there yet, right? I'm not there yet. I don't want to go back to that guy. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So um, you, what, is that, what is that thing for you? For him, it was, I don't need to see the awards. But for you... What is that? What is that thing? And and actually, Musa, I'll ask you that kind of like what keeps you hungry? What keeps you besides the like I'm never settling kind of status or whatever. But what is that thing that maybe you reflect on or that's not in your house or whatever? That's like, yeah, I haven't made it. Yeah. yeah I mean, to be honest, there's two things, man, for me personally, and, and they're very personal things that are near and dear to my heart. Uh, the, the first one is, I, I'm, I'm so mindful of this. I say this a lot. It's to reach the expectations of the public before short of my potential. Mm. I'm so, like, I keep that at the top of my mind. And then also, just because of my personal story and, I, and I'm comfortable sharing it, it, like, literally at any moment, the States is not home for me. I don't mm. have, you know, like a, a, a legit home base. So it's like you got to you got to squeeze out every ounce that you can because you're not guaranteed like safety. Right. And, and for those who are wondering, like, Moose, what are you talking about? I, I'm, I'm just saying I, I'm not I'm not a citizen of the state. So for me, at any moment, I walk with the mentality of, yo, at any moment they can call you to go back home. And when that call comes, you're going to have to pack the bags and leave. So on, there's a different mentality for it. Hold on, you you like clean that up though. I don't want people to think you illegal in these streets. I don't want you like no 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 no. It's 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 not even about being illegal. Is is that's just how the system is set up, right? Mm -hmm. And and you play within the rules and you understand. But I'm saying it's it's a you know it's a different mentality in terms of how you how you walk with it when you know that oh I got forever. This is my home versus. Oh, I know at the end of the day, I'm just a visitor here and I have a great opportunity and I got to take advantage of it. So that that's just kind of how I look at it, right? It's like, yo, it is what it is. That's how the system is. And I choose to to live and play by these rules. And if I don't like it, I can always leave uh, you know, on my own. But that that's just a part of the game that I'm at I'm at right now. That, that look. Tell, tell the people what it is for you though. We wanna know. We wanna know what keeps you humble and hungry. Um, uh, my house. I'm going to be honest with you, <laughs> uh, my house. And what I mean by that is I try, and, and some people think I'm crazy for this, I try to have an incomplete house, right? Like for those three people who've probably been to my house, shout out to those three, um, I it's not super furnished or anything like that because I don't want to feel like I'm at home per se, because there's so much more, like I feel as if I, um, how do I put this? That there's so much more to do and I don't want to feel comfortable even at my own home. Mm. Like my, my room is straight, don't get it twisted, but the home in com as a complete whole, there's still stuff that still needs to be done and build and everything. And in my mind, I have certain milestones of, okay, when I reach this level, then I'll get this done. When I reach this level, then I reach, I'll get this done and things like that. But I never want to come home and be like, ah, oh, I come home to this and everything like right. that. I really feel as if this is a place that I'm here to work and sleep, right? Work and sleep, not completely relax. Because what I need to get done is not done. So work and sleep. And a little bit of recharge because I got a PlayStation 5. <laughs> yay, yay. But I, I will say that. <laughs> but um, let's get into the next clip, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, if you have been living under a rock or you don't have Instagram or Apple Music, um, we're going to be talking about verses. And this has really kept me super excited throughout COVID, right? How they've really 
taken a uh, an idea and really made it into a brand. But before I get all into it, because I could do a whole lecture on it, let's show the clip. Myself and Timberland have been working on this idea called Versus for about three years now. Then this trying time came and everybody started going to social media to express themselves. So what we did was I played my top songs, he played his top songs, and we went on Instagram Live. <laughs> you having fun? This is so good for the culture. Let's go. A lot of people like to say battle. We pulled back off of that word battle because we're battling enough in the world today. We call it an educational celebration. <sighs> so let me let me get in my bag on this one. Let me get in my bag. So check this out. First part, timing. My man said, we've been thinking about this for three years. Okay. Now, him and Timberland by far, are top tier, top five hip-hop artists ever, okay? I'll say ever. And for them to have an idea, they could have executed it at any moment, right? Uh, Swiss Beats, a few, not few, but quite a bit ago of a summer jam, did a battle with Kanye West. And it could have been right then and there, the start of verses, right? Um, but they saw an opportunity through COVID where everybody was all confused, didn't know what to do, stuck at home, only had their phones or their laptops or whatever, and was... 24 seven on social media, they said, you know what? This is the time. This is when people need it. People would have maybe appreciated it before just for bragging rights or whatever, but the culture, the, the world needs versus now, right? So they took an idea, found the proper time and, and launched it during a time where everybody was on their phone where everybody needed a piece of relief and getting their minds off of reality of everything that was happening through COVID, even everything that was happening through uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, right? And how they took an idea to a whole established trademark multi, oh, I wouldn't say multi-million, but definitely a bag of, of, of a brand is incredible. And how even the sense of, let me put it on a free platform because it's an idea, right? Because it's an idea. Let me take it from a free platform to then let the artists have control of it. Because Moose, I don't know if you remember when they had it with uh, Neo and of course, the, the famous uh, Babyface and Teddy Riley uh, battle, that was all with, uh, with the artist controlling the live. So it wasn't even on the versus Instagram or platform per se, it was on the artist. You had to go and follow them and everything, right? And they saw that, saw the ups and downs with that, like any other business, any other brand. They saw the ups and downs and they took full control. They put it on their platform. They made people go and that was based off the Beanie Man and uh, Beanie Man battle where it was in Jamaica and they were all in one location. Right. They partnered up with Apple so that when there is a battle People from Apple are now on on ground and setting up everything instead of allowing the artist to do it, right? They partnered with Instagram to make sure that there's longer lives instead of it getting interrupted, right? They uh, got sponsors like Ciroc and whatever, whoever else wanted to sponsor it, Wingstop with Rick Ross and things like that. And was very strategic with the partnerships as well as still keeping it free for the culture. And not only 
did it help the culture, but it helped the artists who were involved. They called it like the versus effect, where not only do your following go up, not only uh, do you get the exposure that you need to different generations, but your streams went up. Patti LaBelle and uh, Gladys Knight, people who were not streaming, who didn't come up in the streaming age or era, now was streaming to the max. They were on the charts. They've ne they haven't been on the charts ever in the streaming in the streaming era, right? Erica Badu and Jill Scott were in like twenty different charts. They took an idea to something that was for the people and the artists. And the great thing, that's why I was talking about Swiss before, when it comes to the producer, there was one interview where he was like, what we created with Rough Riders was great, but I felt like I, I needed to do more with just the label of producing and I needed to give back to the people. So Versus allowed him to be to give back to the people and produce something for the culture, right? Now, like I said, we'll get into the, the art and everything as well, but from a music standpoint, from a place where people really needed that relief and not only the people needed the relief, but the artists needed the relief because once you bring up the streams, you bring in up people's money, you bring in up people's bags. So it is, what he did, what him and Tim did with verses is unbelievable, unbelievable. But Moose, I would love to hear, because you know I've watched all the verses. Well, maybe yeah. not all. I think I didn't watch two of them. But out of all, all of them, I didn't watch two. But what do you think about verses? Phenomenal idea. You know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't watch all of them. But... While I'm going through this concept, I'm thinking about the message and the meaning behind everything that he created, mm -hmm. right? Something by the people, for the people. So much so, it's so unique in its essence that it, it makes the platform have to reconsider where they're investing their resources mm -hmm. or how they're making things available. Like you touched on it, for Instagram to remove their 60-minute live limit like, think about that. You, you have a, a billion dollar or multi-billion dollar platform restructuring its platform for you. And the crazy thing before that, we had DJ D Nice who was going live Absolutely. all the time and they didn't Absolutely. do that for him. And they that brought beyond traffic to Instagram to see what DJ is going live for 12 hours. And he would yeah. continuously start. It wasn't until versus till they're like, Oh, there's two key players on our platform that is bringing in super traffic. Let's take this this Joker off. I think that's huge. Major, major, major. That, like I'm saying, for 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 the platform to level up because of what you're doing, you know, one of the things I was thinking about too, it's the importance for us on this journey of building businesses and brands mm -hmm. to not fake our numbers. Right. I think it's so critical because we were mentioning uh, Fadia, the lady from Instagram herself, yep. where she said it caught our attention because outside of the fact that I'm personally a fan of the music and what they were doing, on the back end, we also saw the numbers. Yeah. So they saw the numbers and it was like, oh, yep, this is something worth looking into, right? And they put their chips behind it. So I, I think it's it's revolutionary in so many ways. And, and I love that. They didn't sell out. Mm -hmm. That's something we got to talk about. Like, there's a lot of movements that start with a lot of the right slogans. Oh, this is for the culture. This is yeah. for the people. But as soon as corporations come with the big check, they're like, oh, <laughs> uh, culture, we'll be right back. Uh, right. Let me go to the bank real quick. So the fact that they stay true the entire time is so real, man. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's beyond... Uh, artistry or just really good deeds that they're doing, they're really revolutionizing what's possible regardless of how something is already established. Like we can literally still come out here with the right resources and relationships in place mm -hmm. and reignite something that has not been thought of before. 
and and the pivots that they've done through each stage of uh of verses is crazy like it started with their phone and their laptops right and random internet service right yeah. to then let's do the eye rig so then you heard the music clearer through the phone based off their system right to then partnering with apple to then have two different experiences you could watch it on instagram right through clear audio and everything like that but you could have a way better hd experience and have it on your smart uh tv and your your laptop and your phone and have it all there high definition through apple like th each they were very intentional with each of the steps you saw the growth of what came from an idea to a whole brand yeah. worldwide yeah. brand people are and from recent interviews they're like yo we haven't even touched the surface we haven't touched latin we haven't touched yeah. the hispanic community we haven't touched the world community yet you know we haven't touched african community like there's so many different ways they could go about it and i do love the fact that they were like yo it's a celebration right though we hear verses more instantly like yo battle right and we can't help it that makes it very entertaining but down the line when they were going through uh the later rounds like brandy and monica uh clearly patty labelle gladys knight like that's not a battle that's like yo let's really celebrate that these living legends are here in this era like they're we never see them anymore right um who was it it was like jada kiss and fab that was a great battle right shout out to new york um but to to really show even it it inspired me because you could use this very practical like don't look at it from just a musical standpoint right i literally have created the replay squad based off the verses uh the verses effect where you have the live on your instagram but then you're recording on an hd and you're and you're uh giving a certain community the hd experience with the audio correct and everything like that so i i really want to make sure that people see like the growth of these different brands and these different businesses there's stuff that we could apply for ourselves if we just start thinking as a producer as what can we take from these lessons and put it into our own brands because the second i really started studying verses like i used to go live every after every verses do a recap but from a branding standpoint like who, okay what yeah. did we learn what did we what did we learn you saw when rick ross was there bel air was there yep. wingstop yep. was there right he was always promoting his brands right so rock is always there there there's they're starting to get clear um they starting to understand the virtual experience a little bit better so that take what these people are doing and how can it apply to what you are doing i think would be a super game changer for and it doesn't matter what brand you have it doesn't matter what you do i don't care if you're a speaker i don't care if you're an author i don't care if you're a shoe lace person whatever i don't care you can learn something from this it, the virtual experience based off what we're doing now we're, we're hearing that we're going to be locked in again for what six weeks possibly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick it's, it's here to stay you know it's here to stay i think just this this like people are so used to this now and i'm not saying that this is going to be the reality forever but you know i, I think for people like swiss and timberland who jumped right into it Mm -hmm. And and the part that I don't want going over people's head is if you're watching this clip, and again, shout out to everybody who's actually listening to the episode on YouTube, you notice that there's a piece of it where, like you said, in the car, right? Like I remember mm -hmm. actually tuning into that specific live. Yeah. Like Swiss Beats was in his car, yeah. <laughs> right? And like on live and, and, and going back and forth and really just having a great time with it. And, and we often talk about let your audience tell you if they like it or not. Mm. You know, they had 20,000 people on those lives uh, and it was a very just kind of like simple setup, you know, like you said, phones, laptops, whatever, making it work. 
and and it it proved the concept. So yeah, it, it's uh, it's incredible on so many levels. What are what are some trends that you're seeing? Maybe now that people are getting acclimated to the new normal, the mm-hmm. pandemic, a, a potential second lockdown. Mm-hmm. What are some trends that you think might pick up, or something that is is opportunity? You know, going into this next. Prayfully, we don't see it, but just this new normal. What do you What do you think are some trends that might pop off? I I, I think th- live isn't going anywhere, right? Like so, not necessarily a new trend, but I think a a, a like truly focus on how do I connect with my audience, and for certain industries, live and virtual concerts and virtual events is is really here to stay. Why? Because you're now reaching the masses and not just a certain location, right? And I think through this time, we've realized, even with, um, with Eric Thomas' brand, we really see that there's people from Australia and Germany and all these different places who are now tuned in to these events that they couldn't have before, right? We look at the versus thing. There's people worldwide watching in in a, in a a concert that they would have never never seen. No one would have yeah. ever seen uh, Brandy and Monica in one spot and be in the rooms, virtual rooms, with Michelle Obama, with Diddy, with so many uh, celebrities. Like that's what is so great about this. It's like. You there be you would never be in a room of over a million people, a million people, a yeah. million people, right? And with top people who get paid millions of dollars and all that great stuff, only people you see on TV, movies, all that great stuff, you would never be in the same room. And because of COVID. That has been the positive side of it is that we are now being able to be in the room to sit at the table with these people that we never would have. So I think figuring out and really coming up with a strategy for live events, for live concerts, for live readings, you know, um, is going to be what people really need to hone in on rather than just regular posting, regular this and that. Like, what is your virtual experience? What is your versus effect? What is happening in your brand that you could really take this time? Because especially with this potential of another lockdown, right? Depending on when you hear this, it is it is real and we're not going anywhere. So I might as well try to make an experience for my audience because they're dealing with it just like I am. And so if I'm not being a, a, a thought leader, if I'm not being a forward thinker with this with this situation, then I'm going to be left behind like how some people have through COVID. Simple as that. You know what I mean? But, okay, let's get into this next clip because oh, this part is very um, interesting. So we've talked uh, a lot about different investments uh, with stocks and stuff like that. When we on our Facebook live, when we went over uh, Jay-Z, which we will bring to the podcast, I promise you down the line. Um, We mentioned about an art collection, but we didn't really go into it. Swiss is big in art. So big. My man has his own museum in his house. So let, let's hear what he has to say about art. Well, I feel like um, it's very important for us as the culture to own the culture or pieces of the culture and change that whole concept of making it for other people to own. And we don't have a trace of it left around where we can pull from, uh, which is the reason why we collect in the Dean Collection so heavy. We collect like we're building a museum because we want to save most of these pieces so the next generation and the youth can have something to pull from or go back to um, of their history. So, uh, Moose, start this off. 
So, so this this was really just on so many levels, man. So dope. So like, the the first part is you, you got to understand kind of the, the again the progression that he takes. Right, first he gets interested in art just as anybody else. It was his way of getting into something to take a break from the music game. Right, so he goes into art while others were in real estate. He dives into art about ten years ago, maybe a little bit more now. So really, way before it was popular. Right, so he's in the room having these discussions, learning, and he really replicates the versus model in the art industry. Mm-hmm. Right, with no commissions, with the Dean Collection, where he's now starting to look out for the artists because he's realizing, like, yo, I'm a creative, and the creatives that are here are, or specifically the creatives that are making art and paintings and all of these amazing things. They're not getting the opportunity to continue to benefit off of the resale. So I'll give you an example. There is a piece that Diddy sold or purchased actually, and, and Swiss helped them with it. He helped them uh, to purchase the piece because it was a growing piece that, again, wanted to keep within the culture. It was $21 million. dollars. Wait, first of all, you're not going to speed past that. Like you didn't just say what you just said. $21 million. dollars. So Diddy got a piece for $21 million. Right. And and Swiss helped kind of facilitate that deal. The artist who actually created that piece, I believe his name is something Mitchell. Forgive me on that. I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. But he got compensated less than six figures. Mm-hmm. So while people were reaching out to him, absolutely like, man, congratulations. You're the highest paid. Right. Black uh, creative or black artist uh, living. How does that feel? And he's like. Uh, it doesn't feel too great, right? Because like I literally, I'm not getting any of that mm-hmm. because that's just how it's set up. So that was an opportunity for Swiss Beats to be like, hold up a second. We should not let people who are building such great things in our world to starve, to die broke. Yeah. And literally replicated, and I would say he probably even started in that industry first and then replicated the same thing with the versus model, right? Where there are some people who were getting upset because... Uh, they were saying like, oh, Swiss Beats wants to take money from the younger generation to pay the older people almost like an entry fee or respect to the OGs. And it's like, no, th- what he's doing is brilliant because he wants everyone to, to not deteriorate, to, to have that fall off. So, yeah, I, I think it's, it's just so powerful, man, what he's done there. And then to kind of keep himself disciplined uh, is er- all the art that he collects through the Dean Collection it's under his children's name. Mm-hmm. So he can't resell it. Mm. So it's, it's just like what I'm looking at, I'm like, man, where people have different passions or different reasons for being involved in things. I'm, I'm seeing a true flight attendant spirit, and I'm going to make a, a quick reference to the, to the flight assessment here, but I'm seeing a true flight attendant spirit just to say, I want to give back to the people. I care about the creatives. I'm a creative and I'm going to pass it forward, you know, to the next generation. So I'm going to start making some early predictions here, Nick, and uh, just give the people something to look out for. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't I, I could I could semi agree, but yeah. we'll get into that conversation. I think so. So I want to put up on the screen. Uh, so for all my podcast audio people, uh, make sure you head over to YouTube to see what I'm showing. But uh, cause. All right. My man has one of the biggest statues in his quote unquote museum, a.k.a. his house. Right. Um, and let me give some back. I, I had this conversation with Moose where I've. Because we're being so exposed now with, you know, how important uh, stocks are, how important art is, how important owning different businesses are. You know, I started looking into some of the the art situations that people have. Now, granted, I'm a sneakerhead. So, of course, sometimes I go into the hype beast culture because Mm. what is the most popular thing that people are buying? Right. And so cause is one of those art things that um is like a figurine that some people think resembles mickey mouse right and other uh kind of things 
It was definitely literally like a toy figure. Now uh, they run about like $6,000 for a small piece, right? Um, those who saw Drake's uh, Tootsie Slide, right? He has two. Those run about like 120 k a pop, right? So I could imagine how much that one is. I got an email for just 10 prints, okay? Because I'm on their email list. Like, yo, I would love to own something like this, right? Because I just think it's super unique, right? $28,000 for 10 prints, not originals. Prints, people. How, wow. like, first of all, you're not going to speed past that. Like, you didn't just say what you just said. Yes, 28, right? Art is a different, like, that's a different bag, okay? That is a different bag. And, and what I did like about what Swiss says is, like, yo, I want to introduce the culture to art regardless of if you have $10 in your pocket or if you have $100,000 uh, in your in your bank account, it doesn't matter. Like I think the culture needs to have a piece of it and continue to keep it in the culture, right? Um, and what he does in Art Basel and the no commission situation and introducing people to to these different artists for free, pretty much, and allowing the artist to have a hundred percent of the commission which is not heard of when it comes to these different galleries and everything like that, right? I think how he's taking art and putting it almost as a new norm for minorities, I think is really great because he started it off as first like any other person, like, yo, it's a great investment. But then he realized like, look, this is, this is something that we all should own and we should all have a piece of, right? And even, um, man, there was this one, once again, sneakerhead. So there's this one artist that has, I showed you Moose, like it was like a 3D uh, Jordan thing. Like, so it showed yeah. Jordan and then you put it to the side, it was a whole sneaker. I was like $10,000. I was like, yo. I really like need to get my my weight up if I want to get into the art thing, right? But with the Dean collection, what he's doing, he's introducing art to whatever budget that you have within no commission, right? So I know for me, I'm going to look more into these different artists, right? There was an interview that he said the the way to make money in the art situation in the art business is to get them where there's no hype like get them when there's not trending because you take up a hundred three hundred thousand uh three hundred percent of the earnings right when there is hype when people start getting into it it's not about buying the the hundred, $300 million paintings. It's really about uh, going into the artists when they're, when they're kind of warm, kind of lukewarm and then building it up. So I, I thought like he really opened my eyes as far as, okay, cool. And plus I love how he's doing the business side of it where the, like the example that you said, he's like, yo, we're going to try to make it feel as if it's publishing. Like, you're going to sign a paper like, yo, this person made it and it's going to be up to you what you give back to them. Right. Because I think with the guy that you said, he sold it for maybe a couple of hundred, like a hundred thousand. Right. He yeah. sold it for that. But then it got resold. I, I'm assuming it got resold yeah. for the 21 yeah. mil. Right. And yeah. shout out to Diddy for keeping it into the culture. But that that is true. Artists do get like screwed in that kind of way. And Swiss coming from a music standpoint, he's like, yo, anytime my music gets played, I get paid. Anytime it gets used in a movie, anytime it gets used, like I get paid. And so I think we should do that with artists. And I'm on, I'm going to put it to a point, like how can that happen with content? Mm. I 
would love to team up with somebody to try to figure that out. Like how, and besides YouTube and everything, because you got to reach a certain amount of of, of views and, and subscribers and anything. Like how do we take more ownership of those videos that and those pictures and everything that continues to be uh, repurposed? I think that's definitely uh, a topic to be talked about. But you know, when you hear yeah. there, that's. That's, that's, that's so funny. real. Um, that's so real. But uh, let's get into this next one. I'm not. I'm not going to introduce. It. I'm just going to play it. Right, because we don't only culture that whole endless grudges. The other cultures and the other side of the world, you could take a hundred. They take a hundred million from each other and be at dinner on Friday at each other's house. Yeah. You facts. remember when we used to see that with the labels? Yeah. And I should be like, huh? Leo Cohen got a problem with this one. And we thinking it's a war. We go to the Hamptons, they all in the same house. Talking about, oh, that's business. We, we chilling right now. I know. Our coach, you got to understand those particular lines. When it's business, it's business. And when it's family and when it's friendship, it got to stay on that line. We can't mix those things together and hold grudges because we only holding ourselves back. So let me tell you. Okay, let me tell you. I'm going to start this. Business and friends and family is so hard to separate sometimes. Okay? I totally agree with Swiss. And I don't, I didn't even think about it from a culture standpoint, right? But um, if we, if we going to be real with this, Certain people can like be super cutthroat and then have crumpet and tea right after. Like, yo, what's up? How you doing? How's everything? How's, how's your wife? Yeah, I just, you know, I took a, a $3 million deal from you, right f from under you. But yeah, we still good, right? And they could actually like be cool where we're at here like, Nah, get out of my face. What are we doing? Right. And I, I, I know for me, I struggle with that. Like, and when it comes to Swiss, like we, we look at him, he went back to business school. He went to what, to Howard, Harvard, which one he go to? He went to Harvard Business School, got Harvard. two degrees from there. Yeah. Two, two. Let's, let's go with the two. Let's go two degrees. But, you know, he went back and there was a there was a language barrier. Like there was a culture barrier where he was bringing in like really big, uh, big players to the table. He was doing a lot of great things and he still wasn't getting the results that he needed. And he asked some of his friends, like, yo, what's going on? He's like, yo, you're not speaking the proper language, right? And he had to learn the business side. He went back and invested uh, three years into college to, to truly learn the business side because us as creators, right, we stay in our creative vibes. So staying in our creative vibes, we know, not necessarily know nothing, but we're not... Um, we're more concerned about the creative side than the business side. So those friends and family situations and business, when it collides, right, it, it doesn't make sense to us because we are so involved in the creative side. Yo, I, Moose would know that about me. I'm like, yo, you handle the business. Like, I don't want, like, just bring it back when it needs to be like a solid, like, yes, no, a certain direction we need to get this done, but all the details and everything, I don't want it because I have feelings and I think we all should get together and it shouldn't be this ugly. And why are we even talking about this? Like, I don't get it, right? But he's so real because I think even in uh, in our standpoint moves, I think I got in my feelings a bit sometimes. Like, mm -mm, no, I'm done. I don't want it. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. This is trash. Why? Why do you say this? It's hurt my feelings. How could we? How do we have to bring it this way? But then I think on it on the other side, like 
they ain't tripping. They're like, we still good. What? This is business. This isn't, this isn't anything bad. And I think we really do need, everybody do needs to spend time learning the business side. I, I don't know if we all need to go and do the same thing that, that Swiss did and go back to college for three years. I'm not saying that, but shout out to Karen Civil because she did the same thing. She went back to college and learned more of the business side because when we get into these industries that we made up, that we created, how are we supposed to learn the business side of things? That's why, no offense to anybody, I promise you, but that's why the white people come in and they be like, hey, we've been doing this. Let me show you while I take a whole big chunk of your money. And we just don't know. And so now I'm looking at it like, yo, how am I supposed to get more aware of the business side? How do I detach myself from the feelings and the business, from the creative and to the business? Because if I could do that, I think my money would be way longer. Wait, mm-hmm. it's great, mm-hmm. right? Um, not saying that my money's bad, but I'm saying that I know I've caught myself into some things that I've held a grudge and it probably stopped me from making a bigger bag than I could have because I was so caught up in this isn't, this isn't right morally. This isn't right like as a human being. And... I ain't fooling with you or your kind because you did it this way. And the other person's like, yeah, what's the problem? We chilling. What's we get separated. Why can't we separate it? And the fact that Swiss from the background that he has from New York running the streets and everything to be like, you know, our whole culture needs to stop holding grudges and understand that a bag is a bag. And friends and family is two different things they've never been. And then even we give advice of, yo, don't, your business isn't for friends and family. Like we start off with that, but then we don't get into deeper with the team. We don't get deeper into the legal side. We don't get deeper into that part. We go from the surface of don't, don't mix your business and and friends and family and don't put so much expectations on it. That should have been a clear sign in the beginning. I'm just saying, what do you think, Moose? Yeah, I mean, you, you got to have the discipline to know when to let go of the friend's pass in a business situation. Because it's it's not that the two can't be mixed or one can do something that the other can't. It's just that when you're thinking that we're still operating as friends, but we're having a business discussion, mm-hmm. that's when you're going to really get taken advantage of or just not have a favorable outcome. I'm not saying that there are bad people out there, but yeah, we do know that there are people out there who are sharks, who (laughs) their main job is to compete or negotiate terms that are more beneficial for their party, the party that they represent. That's a real situation. That that is not uh, anything that's made up or a thought about. That That's a real situation. So when you're still walking in the park and this is a legit negotiation at the table, you're going to lose. You're going to get taken advantage of. And I think that's where people get emotional about it. Now, we expect that maybe we get a forewarning like, hey, uh, friendship, pause, uh, activate business mode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? That like, would be great. That would be great. That, that would be nice. Yeah, but no, that, that's not how it works, man. For people who are competitive and they're looking to win at all costs, that's what it is. But I think also in the minority community, just in general, a grudge in that community is different than what it is in other parts of the world or in other communities. A grudge in the minority community is people possibly losing their lives, mm. right? Like it's different. It's a different type of grudge. And I think that's more so what he's speaking about here, that we have to learn how to maybe just take one for the team, even if you're going to wear your heart on your sleeve, but not go to the extent of, yo, I'm beefing for this person for X amount of years. And it's just totally taken away from the greatness that you have to give or share or can co-create with that individual. That's great. That was so good. That was... That was so good. Shout out to the minorities, though. I'm just put that out there. I just, we're great. We're great people. We just, I think 
We're awesome, man. Yeah, we're awesome. I, I think we're just a bit more, like, I, I almost like, how do I put this? A, adjusting, which is, I think that comes hard for me to say. I don't know why. Uh, adjusting to the environment that we need to be in. So if we're in a business environment that we need to adjust to those business rules, to those business vibes, um, instead of thinking that everything's play play or love and everything like that, even I think any industry, because, you know, we're big on on music and hip hop, of course, um, but any industry, you're always going to hear something that's like, yo, that was super cutthroat. Like that was super wrong. Right. How do we avoid those things? I think that's just really looking at the situations and learning from it and even getting a little bit more ahead of ourselves. Like the same way we take our craft as serious as we do and learn from that, we need to learn all the different angles of it. So if we are in uh, the creative side of things and it has to be the business side as well, we have to learn the business side. If we Absolutely. are, you know, just in any part of entrepreneurship, it's not just about the brand that we are creating. It is the business side of it as well. So like, what do, what do we need to, to make that as a whole and not just be one-sided? I think that's going to be really crucial for people's success. But before I get too much into it, because I could go real deep on this one, because it's, it's personal. It's personal, people. <laughs> See, Moose didn't have to stop me this time. Let's go into the uh, the last part that I always try to get, you know, a deep statement and everything. Moose sent me one clip and I had to add an extra bar to it. So let's go into the final clip. What I see today, I see a lot of people getting a lot of um, great head starts because of the technology and different things like that. But just remember, can you survive without your Instagram? Are you really talented like they say you are on your likes, right? Know who you are and know what your talent is. And then when you get to a certain level in your talent, sometimes you gotta make yourself cold. Don't wait for people to make you cold. Just know that in this process, you're gonna have to get cold to go back in the oven and reheat yourself up again to come back outside for people to appreciate that. Moose. That one is multi-layered, man. There's there's so many levels to that, you know. And and I want to start with uh, the part of it of him saying you got to make yourself cold, you know. And and he's really talking to talking about walking away from the limelight, where again in in our culture and our generation, we of course we understand the importance of consistency because that's what builds credibility. It's what keeps us hot. It's what keeps us at top of mind awareness, but you know, there's there's a certain element of power that you have when you pur purposely and intentionally step back yeah. and say, you know what, I'm 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 going to do it this way, right? Like I'm going to break the rules on it, and I and I and I'm I'm a big believer in that. I really do believe that it's important for us to go against the grain and break the rules, especially from how it it, it was done traditionally, because it does capture people's attention in a unique way. Now, I think what it really does in addition to it, if if you're in that process, right? If you're in that stage, if you can afford to do it, more importantly, because again, we don't want you to take a one size fits all mentality and just say, oh, I heard Swiss do this, so I'm gonna do that, right? right? If you can afford to do it, if you're in that position, allow yourself to walk away and understand that when he talks about going back in the oven, it's really an opportunity for you to test your gift right. and see how good you are that you can come out revamped, revitalized, and, and, and capture that attention again that you once had, are people still going to respond? Mm -hmm. Right. Do you do you really have that loyalty uh, or do you really have people's ears in a way that you can shut down for a minute and come back without making it seem like, oh, this was a, a social media detox. I was uh, looking out mm. for my personal wellness. It's like, no, this was an intention. I was challenging myself. Right. I wanted to see if I can come back and do it again. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm honestly I know I say this a lot. You know what I'm about. What am I about to say? Let's see if you know. It's one of the best. Episodes. This is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
that's my favorite episode. I loved it so much. Oh man! Um, Shout out to one of the best episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah. you know says that about all the episodes? I think uh, I semi agree with him <laughs> on no it, joke. but it's, but he says oh, it on man. every. This is the best episode ever. Yeah. Nah, nah, I don't know. Like, you don't agree? The, the, num- the numbers say differently. The numbers say differently. But um, so what I will say about this clip, so like you said, is is multiple layers. I'm going to go with the part of, I'm going to piggyback off of what you said first. Um, and you controlling when you are hot and cold and not allowing other people to control it. I think um, we push the limits And we allow people to control our lane, control our careers, than us controlling it, right? We should know when it's it's a bit, it's it's starting to go stale, right? And sometimes we get very caught up in this was working, right? It reminds me of boxing. It reminds me of how Floyd said, I'm out. There's no scar on my record. I've made the greatest investments. I'm good. I don't have anything else to prove. Where other uh, boxers have Parkinson's and other things has happened to them because they did not know. Like there is no reason. And I'm sorry because, you know, shout out to E because he did a voiceover for this. But there is no reason Mike Tyson, Roy Jones are, are fighting. There's none. It gets to the point of you have depended too much on the limelight and the money. And that some of those factors will make you go and not have you stop when you should have, at least from your standpoint, right? Once you reach a certain amount, you may need to regroup. You may need to reinvent yourself. You may may need to do something different. I think a pivot, for example, if we're staying on this topic, if the pivot that Mike did from a boxer to a podcaster and to his marijuana empire, I think that is amazing. There is no need to go back into the ring, right? I think instantly of that when you allow something to go cold, certain rappers continue to drop albums when their best was probably at their second. They didn't even need to make a third, right? You have established everything you needed to, and now you're allowing the public to tarnish it, which is worse, right? I think uh, a a perfect person as for for this example is a chameleon air, right? Rapper out of Texas did one, uh, one big hit, Right? Uh, Riding dirty. Then he made a pivot to the tech industry and and is a millionaire, multimillionaire, off of being in the tech industry and being like, nah, you know, I, I, I did my accolades. I got a hit. I made millions. Now I'm going to take it to this way. Right? Um, so I think for that, like, Allowing yourself to go cold, allowing that to like, you know, sit down real quick and maybe reinvent yourself or come back even stronger is is crucial to people's um, careers, crucial in any industry and in not only entertainment industry, but in just any industry. I think that's really crucial. The first part that he said is so big because so many people we are going over on this episode and I don't really care. Um It's so big that a lot of people think they have talent and all they have is likes. Y'all don't, y'all not talented in anything at all. Sorry. Y'all really not. And we, we are just in a time where we're not really concentrating on our true talent and what we're supposed to do. We are concentrated on the tech side and making people and making these impressions and these, and these reach and this engagement. And granted, I'm all about that. I'm big on social media. 
I'm big on the whole online branding. I know it's very crucial as a tool, but it does not determine who you are, right? It doesn't determine how hot you are. It doesn't determine how knowledgeable you are. It doesn't determine your, your worth or anything like that. It is a tool to help you expand. And some people have taken away the tool part and have really made it as an identity for themselves. And so I think at that point, just get off social media because you're completely lost. But they won't. So you, we have to look at it and continue to, to look at things as this is a tool. This doesn't make or break me. If I do not make it on this platform, that does not determine that I am not worth anything, that, that my talent is great, that I'm not going to still be number one in some standpoint. We allow the tech to kind of take over the hard work because it's supposed to make it a bit easier. Absolutely. We're not supposed to be, uh, if we're talking about Swiss beats and the, the hip hop industry, we're not supposed to be selling out of the trunk of our, uh, selling mixtapes out of the back of our car anymore. We're not supposed to be going on Times Square and going, yo, my man, can you check out this mixtape real quick? Can you check this out? It's $5. Can you check this out? Right. We're not supposed to be doing this. We are able to go on social media, on Spotify, on SoundCloud, and be able to distribute it to the world, not just to that block, not just to that uh, shopping center, but to the world, right? It's supposed to be a bit easier because those people before us has made it, has, has done the hard part so we can come in and be like, yo, boom, I'm going to be I'm going to be good. But some of us have just allowed it to create our identity and saying that we are hot because we have uh, 50,000, 100,000, millions of followers. But to be honest with you, what are you good at? I'm just saying. Hey. Anyway. That was fire. <laughs> that was I'm just, fire. I'm just saying. And it, it is what it is. But, um, Let's let's get into uh because I gotta play this PS5. Yummy. Yeah, I mean, shout out to everybody who got a PS5. <laughs> that was a whole situation. We'll get into that. But let's get into these uh flight assessment characters and try to figure out what Swiss Beats is. Is he a pilot? Is he a flight attendant? Is he grounds crew or air traffic controller? If you have not taken the flight assessment at all, please go to flightassessment.com. It will change your life. It will change your life. It will change your life. So, whose turn is it? I don't remember. Is it mine? Uh, I don't remember either, but I think you should go first. Yeah, okay. I'll, we'll let I, you go first. I'll go first. Um, so, all right. I do not believe he is a pilot. Correct. <laughs> what do you have? His assessment? Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. He's like, correct. So I talked to him. I made him take the assessment. <laughs> uh, Swizzy. Oh, Swizzy. my goodness. All right. Tag, hear it. All right. All right. Mm. I will say that Swizz is not a ground screw. You see how slow I am with this one? I'm... Yeah. Mm. Um, can we talk about that? Yes. Okay. Yes, we okay. can. We can talk about that. Um, okay, so yes, I agree with the three, right? There was one that I was like, he's definitely not a pilot, right? But he talks too much about giving back and the community and everything like that. And though that does go with the flight attendant, I do, I do agree with you. Okay. I'm not saying he's not that I'm saying the, the consistency of always caring uh, for others and putting now him uh, others in front of himself a bit more could have ground crew vibes. Can be like more of a support kind of vibe. I, I'm just saying it could. No, I totally, I totally. I mean, you you make a great deal, right? We know that uh, grounds crews tend to be extremely supportive, and they do care to look out for uh, their people, a hundred percent. 
but I, uh, what I took into consideration is just the slight, slight different information, right? Mm -hmm. So I noticed that number one, he's extremely well connected. His yes. relationships are very rich. Yes. Uh, across a plethora of different industries. Yes. Why did I just say that word? Plethora. plethora. I feel like, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> a variety of different industries, right? But, but here's what I look at. Mm -hmm. He got into a program at Harvard that is only for top executives. It's an entrepreneurship program that helps you to scale your business or whatever it is that you're a part of. Yes. But you have to be a part of a company or an organization that is $10 million or more, and you have to have majority stake. Guess how he got into the program, Nikki? Mm. I don't know. It was his partnership with Monster that allowed him to get the okay into the program. And then guess what happens? His classmates are executives that come to class on private jets. Mm. So it's a very strategic way to network and build with some of the people in power positions that you need to continue to build your empire so that you can then come back and say, okay, let's look out for the South Bronx. Let's look out for the artists who are not getting commission after they sell their piece. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just thought that the moves are so strategic. The relationships are so rich that you can come back and then do what you want to do. So I, I saw more of the flight attendant, of course, paralleled with that air traffic control there with a with a with a unique combo for sure. Okay. Okay. I see. I see you what you good. did there. Yeah. I see what you did there. All right. All right. All right. Okay. I'm with it. I like it. I like it. So, um, so what's the highest though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, what would you Oh, well, I'm gonna hold on. And these, that leaves one. That leaves that leaves one. I'm going to say that m my man is a is a flight attendant. I'm not going to say anything yeah. else. I'm just going to say yeah. he's a flight attendant. I mean, um, I think he's. I, I will say he's super strategic, super yeah. strategic. Yeah. Um, and you know, even from currently, like you you could tell. Before, like, his flight attendant was, like, super big in the beginning with the Rough Riders um, and everything. But then, you know, as he got a family, married, all that great stuff, you know, um, things were now starting to be a bit more strategic. A bit like, yo, I got to be with the family. I don't have to be up front. I don't have to be screaming Swiss, Swizzy all the time and everything like that. I have to literally create something in the background. Like... But I still have to make sure you know my presence is there. You know, so um, he was giving me a lot of uh, ATC vibes um, ads later down. Um, but definitely, yeah. definitely with the art, with yeah, yeah, with yeah. the the definitely people person and always looking out for them and everything like that. I would definitely say flight, uh, flight attendant for sure. Yeah, you for mentioned sure. you mentioned. Um you mentioned chameleon Air, and there's a, a, a like a saying that he has or a slogan that he believes is the formula for success, which I think is this here. It's information, sh information plus relationships mm. is success. And it's really that flight attendant air traffic control combo that you see, you know, uh, Swizzy really like rocking to mm -hmm. get to where he is now. So it's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, flight and, and it's crazy because like, I'm really, I think in this season, really understanding, uh, understanding the power of relationships and the power of like, uh, really reaching out to certain people. Like, uh, shout out to even though this is still semi exclusive, shout out to everybody in Clubhouse. If you if you know, you know. But there are some like really powerful people in there. And that you can talk to if you put your pride down and stop. Some people need to really put their pride down and stop thinking that they are they know everything like this platform is really allowing people to be in the rooms that you would have never thought of. Like how we were talking about with verses, like we would be in a virtual room with Michelle Obama and Diddy and everything like you're literally in the room with some of the top executives in different industries and you could create your own platform on there 
and connecting with people and having conversations and seeing their different perspectives and being like, yo, yo, let's connect. Let's do this together. And every, I'm like, this is great. Like this is a season of relationships where other people may think this is a season of isolation, right? This is a season of relationships because we all are on our phones. We're yeah. all here. Like, what else are we going to do? I might as well talk to you because I can't talk to anybody else in my house. What we, who, who, hello, hello, no, okay. Like, I ain't, there ain't nobody else in yeah. my house. So, like, the relationships is so key. And, and it's, especially in this season, pick up a book, listen to a podcast. Shout out to everybody who's listening to this. Listen, listen to a podcast, uh, you know, buy a course. Whatever it is, get more information into your into your soul, not into your mind. I need it in your soul. I need it to be that deep, right? And make sure you reach out to, to new people. Make sure you reach out to those people who you hope to work for, hope to to talk to. You know, we, re- we reached out to Rick Ross, right? Look at what happened. My man shared it. Like, you never know because of this phone. What could happen? I think it's, I think we're in a great time. Yeah, Not crazy. just all, like I say. We're in yeah, a great time. Yeah. For real. That's so real. That's crazy. But. So crazy. We are so over time. Uh, and plus, like I said, I got to play my PlayStation 5. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Moose, final words. Yeah. You know what, man? I, I think uh, when, when you, when I look at Swizz and I, I'm going to bring it back to make it about the person that we're covering. When I look at Swizz. He's not competing to the world's standards. He's competing to his own standards. That's why you see no awards on the, on the walls. Um, not Walking away, not because no one wants to buy his music anymore, but because he wants to walk away. So it's like when you're really confident, you don't need other people's approval to determine your self-worth or your self-value. It's like that value comes from within. That confidence comes from within. So I, I, when I, w- with this one, I'm definitely going to go back to like, yo, create your own world in a sense. Like it, it, it really is that time for us to walk in our own light. That's it, folks. <laughs>